Hi and welcome. I thought I will make a jelly printing session today because I needed some new prints and I'm using the biggest jelly plate that I have. It's almost a four and I want to play with clear stamps for the first time on the jelly plate. I have never tried that and I'm curious to see how it's going to work. I want to use the Carve Collection and the Pencil Marks number five and I have also prepared a color scheme that I want to share with you so um, you can see which colors I'm going to use. I picked three colors, the Cadmium Red, the Naples Yellow and the Turquoise Green. The Turquoise Green is from Amsterdam, the other two colors are from Schminke and I mix everything with white to get different shades of the colors. I usually always make a spread with some color combos in my art journal so I can test out if I like them or not. Um, I have to say that the first prints I made um, were a bit hard. I had some issues with the paint bottle and it has been a while that I made jelly prints so everything was a little bit um, uh, I would say tricky and the first prints don't turn out in the way I like them but finally I got some really pretty prints and I'm really happy with them and I also will give you a flip through all the prints I make at the end of this video so stay until the end if you want to see all the prints from today I only use leftover papers for my prints because I have a lot of them and I decided I wanted to use them up. Here I just use some of the white paint um, because it was too much and just smear it over my leftover paint palette. These papers are also great for collaging. It's going to be some kind of a longer video today and I'm keeping this in real time so you have the chance to print also some backgrounds if you like. Here I'm just removing that paint because I got too much on my plate. That's a little bit difficult with the Schminke bottles to get the right amount of paint out of them. Sometimes you get nothing out and sometimes it's way too much. I enjoy using clear stamps for jelly printing because it's so easy to clean them. You just can throw them in a container with water so the paint doesn't dry until you have the time to go to the sink and wash them. Don't let the paint dry on the stamps. It's not, it's not very good. You can clean them if the paint dries with alcohol but I think it's not the best for the stamp and also it's a lot of work. While I'm using the stamp for the prints, I put it upside down onto a wet baby wipe. I added some extra water to them and when I'm done I just throw the stamps into a water container and when I finished with everything I go to the sink and wash the stamps. If you have cling mounted rubber stamps it's a bit more difficult because you can't throw the cling mounted stamps into a water container. I now go on top with some more paint just um, a little bit careful not to blend everything but as I told you in the beginning the first prints don't turn out that well. But that is often the case when I do jelly printing. The first two or three prints are a bit of a mess until I get into the groove. Yesterday I added some new clear stamps to the shop. We have four new sets 
Well, they are not new, they are duplicates from the rubber that are already existing. Um, I think it's not that bad. You can use parts of it and also I like some solid papers for collaging. Coming back to the clear stamps, they are in the shop. You will find them in the new section and also in the clear section. And the new sets are 10% off until Wednesday next week. The papers I'm using for my prints are different ones. It's all copy paper and I have some with, I believe, 120 GSM. That leftover paper on the right is a super thin one. I believe it only has 60 GSM and I also will make some prints on 200 GSM paper. Often the paper where I clean the roll looks even better than the prints themselves. If you feel that the video is going too slow, I would recommend using that little gear in the YouTube screen to speed up the video so you have it a little bit quicker and so everybody has the chance to either play along or just watch and then maybe ins be inspired and do some of your own prints. I already have a bunch of jelly printing videos on my YouTube channel. I also have a lot of videos where I'm using the prints. Here I want to make two prints from one layer of paint. Um, the second one is called ghost print and often it gives really nice prints. But I'm struggling doing prints and ghost prints because I feel the first print is always super messy and not nice because of the amount of paint you have on the plate. And you have to work quickly to get the second print done. And here you can see, I think it's a really nice print. There is that empty space in the middle, but I don't really mind that because I will usually cut those papers apart or I make some art journals with them. There is also a video on my YouTube channel. I will link up the playlist at the end of this video. And this was the first print. I just wanted to show it again because I laid it aside so quickly. I'm really sorry about the autofocus of the camera. It's just because I'm doing so much um, nearby. So it does always try to focus on the main thing. I hope it's not too bad. When I'm stamping on the plate, I always try to um, go from one color into the other so I get more texture. So I'm going into the yellow and then into the turquoise and back to the yellow. Sometimes in between I'm stamping onto my cleaning paper on the right side. Um, I just to do this intuitively. I just play around and have some fun. I think I will make another first print and then a ghost print because there was a lot of paint on my plate.
the paper was curling up so much, I just stand it aside. I also really like when I have some white areas on the prints that can give you really interesting card backgrounds where you can add some extra texture with some stamping. And here was the first print. Because of that, I made that color swatch sheet in my art journal. I exactly know which combinations um, turn, turn muddy and which not. And so I know that it's really difficult to mix that turquoise with the red, but it works to mix red with yellow and the yellow with the turquoise. So I'm always a little bit careful not to mix those um, colors that will create mud too much. I think sometimes it's really useful to have some neutrals together with some bright colors that makes the bright colors shine even more. The reason why I'm making prints from thinner paper and from thicker ones is that I prefer the thinner paper for collages and the thicker paper for card backgrounds or artist trading cards. What I also like to use the jelly prints for is to make some paintings with collage on top. I usually make a watercolor background and then I use the jelly prints to cut out some elements like trees or leaves or last time I did a scene on the ocean with some boats. And I really enjoy this. I don't have a video for that but you will find some inspiration on my Instagram page.
this paper I have already used in a past session to um, clean my my brayer and also I added some stamped images. Often I really enjoy these papers. I really like this color combo with the light in the middle. I think that would be also a nice card background maybe for a little scene with some more collaging on top. I'm now going to switch stamps. I just throw this into my water and I will pick one from the craft collection number five. I'm picking another acrylic block that is matching my stamp but that is not ideal because the block is so big and the stamp is very thin compared to the block and that means if you don't um, hold it straight parallel to your plate then the edges of the acrylic block will make marks onto the plate and that's a little bit hard uh, to control so I will use this combination only for one print. I should have used a a longer smaller um, acrylic block if that makes sense. I'm adding a thin layer of paint onto my plate because I already have a great pattern on it and that should be enough to take off all the dried paint from the plate. And these prints are usually my favorites when there are fragments from the past print on the plate and then I pick it up with some paint and I love these grungy textures. And again, it was way too much of the red. I just lay this aside and will use it later. It might have been a better idea to stamp the image also onto my cleaning paper in between so I would have gotten more of the texture. So in this way the texture is not very intense but I really like that one. Um, I think it's perfect for collaging. I really like the green I got in the middle with the Naples yellow and the turquoise together with the white. It's a really pretty green and I think it looks great against the red. I think this could be also a really nice background for a stamped scene or something, something like that.
I'm adding the colors in the same way as I did it before, just I go the other direction. And I will use another stamp because it was a little bit hard with this acrylic block as it's too big and I also wanted to try out the round flowery shape from the craft collection. And here I'm doing the same. I'm going from the red into the turquoise and from the turquoise into the red. And in between I am cleaning the stamp as the solid stamps um, don't give, give you a lot of texture if you don't clean them in between or if you don't have uh, much of a different paint on them. I really like this background. I think it looks super pretty. It's a simple one, but perfect for all kinds of um, projects. I also always love when there are these fragments left on the plate. And when I go on top with the next layer of paint, I always try to, to alternate the colors. So over the area with the red fragments I would add the turquoise and over the turquoise area I would add the reds um, so the contrast is more interesting. And that leftover paper or cleaning paper is also really pretty. And here you can see that there are the fragments from the previous print on this one. And I really like that grungy effect.
Of course, you can also combine more stamps for your prints. I did this in previous videos and I also got some really interesting results. One of my favorite stamps for jelly printing is that grid stamp from the Mixed Media Marks number no. 1. I don't use it in this session, but I have used it a lot of times before and it gives you really nice um, collage papers or background papers for projects. For this print I try to add in some color blocking. Um, this also gives you interesting prints with a lot of variation. That can also be very useful for different kinds of projects. I am not a person who makes jelly prints that are finished artworks. There are some artists out there that make gorgeous prints that are ready to be framed after they are printed. The reason why I don't put down the paint directly onto the plate is that I don't want to smear the other two paints too much and I also I don't want to wait for them to dry so I just be very careful by rolling over the paint that is already on the plate. And I think this is my favorite print from today. Once more I'm switching stamps and I want to use that ginkgo leaf from the pencil marks number no. 5. It's um, the new motif on this set. We have, I believe, on all clear sets extra stamps because the clear sets are um, A5 in size and the rubber sheets are a little bit smaller and as we're keeping the images at the same size we have a little bit more space on the clear sets for some extra stamps so either I have a new motif on the set or we are adding um, some text to use for your projects and I really like the ginkgo leaf.
I will now just print the left side of the plate with the red and I think that turns out also really interesting. I now go in and cover up those stamped leaves with some, I believe, a mixture of the turquoise and the white. Yes. What you can do is you can work with two jelly plates, a smaller one and a bigger one, and then use the smaller one as kind of a stamp pad where you roll down your paint and then you stamp onto the big plate and there you can do the same technique that I have just done and I think this turned out really pretty. I want to use up all the papers that I have left and then I will give you a flip through all the prints from today. The paper I'm using here to clean my brayer is a newsprint paper. I also really like it for collaging and I used it in some of my past videos also where I share how I like to make collage papers. And I think I now will do the last print for today, or maybe, maybe not, as there are three papers left. Or maybe one for the cleaning and one for the print. I will switch stamps again to one of the circle images from the pencil marks. Um, that one is also one of my favorites for jelly printing. And again, don't let the paint dry on your stamp. That's going to be a bit of a boring paper, but sometimes the more solid and um, boring papers are the most useful.
This is the last print. I will now give you a flip through all the prints that we have done today. And don't forget to check out my other Charlie printing videos. I will link them up in the end cards. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye!